Hey friends, hey family, Garden Church. It's Pastor Darren, and I wanted to give you an update today on things that are going on. As California moves into stage two, and begins to reopen. We are seeing a little bit more life in our city, in our county, and in our state. But I wanna talk today about what you can expect from Garden Church. You see, we believe the church has always been essential, but our church has never been primarily organized around large gatherings and buildings. Our primary organizing principle has always been the people of God on mission in our city. This has always been our heart. It's been our focus, it's been our drive, our mission, our purpose, and our vision in Long Beach as it is in heaven, or wherever you are as it is in heaven. So we will continue to follow our governor's and our mayor's guidelines and continue to live stream our Sunday services online. We will do this to ensure safety and health and to protect the vulnerable communities that we serve. We will also do this because we wanna engage Uh, in gatherings that feel like garden gatherings. As large gatherings begin to take shape, we know that there will be a lot of changes moving forward. And uh, public gatherings will require face masks and new disinfectant protocol. Um, Occupancy size will be significantly reduced. The newest information is they'll be reduced to 25%. We will need to practice social distancing. We will not allow, uh, we won't be able to have kids in kids' church for quite some time. All to say, when we come back together, it will look differently than what it's looked like in the past. It won't feel like a typical garden gathering for quite some time. So, although initial guidelines for church gatherings have been announced by uh, our governor, they have not been locally adopted and they might not be adopted for quite some time. In the meantime, we want to continue to do and be church, and we're gonna do this the way we've always done it, by adapting and being flexible. We will do this through being digital communities, gathering wherever you are together to form resilient discipleship learning communities, and we will do this through live streaming our services on Sunday. We are excited to gather on Sundays corporately in the flesh again, Um, but that won't happen for quite some time because when it does, I want it to look and feel like Garden Church. Another obstacle that we face in this is the fact that we don't own our own building. We lease a school facility. We are currently under the restrictions that public schools have for quite some time, and we are looking for alternative space for alternative venues uh, that will allow us to meet again in large gatherings. So please, if you would, continue to pray and partner with us financially to help us move forward um, with where God is leading us next when it comes to, or in regards to venues and space. With all that being said, let me say this. I believe Garden Church will flourish and expand in this next season through you and through your commitment to being church. Not church in a building, not church needing to gather all together in one place just to experience a Sunday gathering, but the church that's resilient, the church that's scattered, the church that's multiplying in homes and apartments across our city and beyond our city. We are continuing to work out our vision wherever you are as it is in heaven. And the next phase for our church will be garden at home. Garden church in your homes. Imagine the possibility right now if hundreds of homes and apartments host church experiences in their living rooms, in their backyards, in shared courtyards or in parks. Imagine house parties every Sunday morning or evening gathering with 10 or so people, whatever is allowed, to experience life and to join in worship, engage in scriptures, receive communion, to pray together through our authentic and life-giving live stream. What if we took this opportunity right now to invite our neighbors, our coworkers, and our family members over to experience church in our homes through Garden at Home? Now, this is going to be available to us when the restrictions of our 
our, our stay-at-home orders are, are opened up a little bit and we're able to gather with 10 or less people in our homes. But what if right now the church, church looked more like the book of Acts? What if God would add to our number uh, daily those who are being saved? What if every day people came to faith, came to experience life, uh, the life of Jesus through your home, through your invitation, through your leadership? Remember, you are church. You have always been essential and you are so much more than a large public gathering. You have persisted throughout history in changing political landscapes of nations and cultures. Whether you were persecuted or celebrated, you have always flourished when your heart was set on the right things. You have never been shut down, closed, or isolated. How could you be because we are church, me and you and us together. Wherever we are, there the church is and the living, breathing body of Jesus is present. And Jesus cannot be shut down because he is the first and he is the last. He is the beginning and the end. He is holding all things together. So, brothers and sisters, we have so much work to do. So let us not waste a single breath complaining or arguing when the world acts just like the world. Instead, roll up your sleeves and go to work. Not tirelessly tirelessly trying to figure out how to sing again in sanctuaries or public spaces. Instead, care for the sick. Give to the poor. Help those in need. Share the gospel. Feed people with the bread of life. Speak truth. Heal with power. Mend the brokenhearted. And participate in the redemption and renewal of all things. We have been created for these very things. And there is no better time than now to lift up your heart and your mind, to have unity in Jesus, and to run the race that has been set before us because the world depends on us. So for now, let me make it clear. We are going to continue to live stream our Sunday gatherings until September. And as that time approaches, we will share updates with you with what our next steps will look like. And as we move into the summer, we will begin a new sermon series on the seven churches in Revelation. I'm very excited for this. We will look at what it means for us to move forward as God's people and as a church. The heart of our church is to make resilient disciples who are formed by the way and the word of God. We wanna live empowered by the spirit, engage in the world as a courageous missional presence and live together as a countercultural community. We know, I know, that not being able to gather as a community has been hard. It is hard, but we're asking you to continue to lean in. We encourage you to prioritize your uh, devotion and quiet time with Jesus. Press into prayer with us. We want you to meet in digital communities and to pray. We are continuing to equip our digital community hosts and our leaders in ways to stay connected and being grounded together in a season that forces us to be online. But let's continue to pray. Let's continue to pray for and build up our leaders during this time. Reach out to your house church pastors, to to your digital community hosts, and continue to spur each other on. Encourage one another in your faith. Let's be devoted to each other. I cannot wait for the day when we get to gather together publicly where we can hug and hold and high five, whatever the future greetings look like. I can't wait to be with you and to be surrounded by all of our families. But for now, this is what our future looks like. We will be resilient in this time and we will continue to carry Jesus' heart and mission for the city and beyond because we pray wherever you are as it is in heaven. May God's kingdom come wherever you are as it is in heaven. I love you guys. I bless you all. Grace and peace to you. Uh, My wife, Alex, and I send our love to your families and to all of you. This is the update. God bless you.